Hello there guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Sal speaking. I've been a karateka all my life, although I haven't been practicing karate for a long time now. But as a teen, I practiced karate, I practiced kung fu, and I enjoy sports a lot. I have been in few fights as a teen, especially because I grew up in the most dangerous part of Palermo city. I saw people fighting every day, I saw really bad things. And by the way, I made a video about it so you can follow the link in the description if you want to know more about my experience. However, in a real fight situation, who's going to win? A martial artist or a random street fighter? If you want to know the answer to this question, please stay with me till the end of this video. Let's try to examine a few styles because to examine all of the martial arts it's impossible. But for a moment, let's examine Karate Shotokan, the style I actually practiced for a long time. Well, it's a nice style, the techniques are fantastic. Katas might not look very effective, or although if you actually do the, um, the application, if you actually apply the katas, you will see that you know there's a lot to take and to learn from it. Although the, the thing that is lacking in, in Shotokan style is the fact that you're, there's no full contact. And that really doesn't prepare you for a real fight situation. You learn how to kick properly, you learn how to you know, direct a punch properly, but in, in an actual you know, practical way, you know, it's not very practical because you know, if you're in a real fight situation, you're not just like controlling your punch, you really need to hit your opponent, otherwise you'll be the one who will fall down on the floor. You know, we, we don't want this to happen, right? But let's examine as well the Kyokushin Karate style, let's say more serious style. Although it's not one of my favorite styles, I must admit that this style is very complete and the, those who practice this style are trained to actually hit you know, their opponents, hit and get hit. So they're like used to like hitting and getting hit and they know how it feels to fight for real. Although in this style I don't like how techniques are very very dirty, like kicks are dirty and many many things are dirty, that's my opinion of course. Uh, but uh, when it comes to effectiveness, you know, I don't think that you know, a technique has to be, you know, uh, from a technical point of view, perfect. I don't think that a, a punch or a kick has to be perfectly executed in order to be effective. But I do also believe that if you know how to throw a punch, you know, if you know how to kick properly and you know how to execute the technique properly and you're used to, you know, hitting your opponent, that's a perfect mix and that's the most effective thing in the world. Of course, in the Kyokushin style, there are like some cool kicks I like and, and there are some people who really know how to execute their techniques perfectly. So talking about boxing, it's a great style, I really like boxing, I think it's very effective because people train really hard, they train, you know, they hit something, they hit like people, they get hit and they get into matches and stuff and it's fantastic. They learn how to dodge, you know, punches. However, I think a disadvantage of boxing, of course, is the fact that they're not using, you know, other parts of the body, such as, you know, specifically kicks. Kicks can be very effective, although in a real fighting situation, the natural way of fighting your opponent is it is natural that you know your punches will be directed to, to your opponent's face or to your opponent's upper part, while it is kind of you know natural that your kicks will reach the down part of the body or your opponent's body, you know. I think it's naturally you know how we're built we're built to punch in the upper part and to kick in the lower part although don't make me wrong high kicks can be very very effective if done properly you want to talk about a style of real like Muay Thai it's probably one of my favorite styles although I've never practiced it but I've seen and I've met some people from Muay Thai and of course their shin is very very strong they're very very trained and 
they hit with their elbow, they do like head bats and it is very complete, you know. I don't think there is such a thing as a perfect martial art as the martial artist makes the style, it's not the style, it's not vice versa, you know. There's no such a thing as a perfect style, you know. There are great people practicing great styles, there are people who excel more than others and people who are more effective than other people. So what is that we can do in order to be effective in a real fight situation? Well, if you're a martial artist, please train every day. You gotta train hard every day. You gotta be persistent. You gotta believe in yourself and you gotta develop your skills. I truly reckon that it takes a long time to develop strong and good skills. It's not something that will happen in a day or two days, you know. It's something that it takes a long time, it takes hard work and concentration. Well, let's think about delinquents. For instance, they, they get to fight every day, they're used to fighting every day, you know, and they're, yes, they're not trained into martial arts. They have no idea of techniques, although, you know, it is kind of scary in a way the fact that nowadays with technology, you know, even a delinquent can watch a tutorial on YouTube, can watch a fighting video on YouTube and can learn some techniques, or even a delinquent can go to the gym and practice a style and then use it for its own advantage, for its own good. So you never know, you know, a mix of a delinquent who fights every day, who's trained into martial arts is a perfect match and it can be very, very dangerous to face. Well, don't make me wrong, a good martial artist should know how to execute his techniques in a perfect way. And so if you're trained, if you know how to kick, if you know how to punch, you should be more effective than somebody who doesn't know how to do it. Although, as I said before, a delinquent who's fighting every day, who gets into a fight every day, you know, knows how to fight. And especially is more used to it. If you know how to punch or kick properly, you're not necessarily trained or ready for a real fight. I think the secret is to be constant, you know, to train every day. Yeah, train hard every day if you can. Even training with little things can make a big, huge difference in a real fight situation. Yeah, try to work on your weak points, you know, and try to strengthen the parts of your body, you know, for example, like in Kung Fu style, you know, they tend to do this. You know and this really hurts this really hurts you know but if you're like you know pairing you know a blow you know or somebody is like trying to knock you down with a chair you know if you're not used to like taking or being hit by by something harder you know you you'll very likely fall down on the floor but if you're like trained and when I say trained I'm talking about even your shin if you're hitting your shin and you're training your shin you will be very likely able to resist somebody who's trying to knock you down. I trained with some friends of mine and I got stronger and stronger and better and better. But the other day I was um, playing around with, with a friend of mine as a teen, uh, my friend Michael from, from USA. So I said to him, let's see how strong your shin is. And, and so I kind of hit him, uh, not in full force, but I, I was hitting quite strongly, you know, quite strong. So he didn't jump around, he said it was fine, you know, I'm sure it was feeling some pain because it's not immortal, of course. But I was thinking about this and this really opened my mind because it made me understand that we're all built differently and some people have stronger bones than others and this can make a difference into a real fight. If you have a strong, naturally built body, you know, you'll be able to stand your opponent's blows in a better way, in a more effective way. You'll be able to resist. So I reckon that some of your success in a real fight situation may depend on how well you're built physically because if your bones are bigger or stronger than somebody else, you'll be able to be stronger if you hit your opponent. I believe that your success may depend on how well built your bones are. Some bones are stronger than others. So my, my opinion on this is I can train as much as I like and of course if I train I will develop you know, some skills and I will get stronger and stronger for sure. But if my opponent is stronger than me, I might fall down on the floor, KO. 
Yeah, when I say strong, I'm not talking about muscles, I'm talking about strength. Some people are naturally strong. I have seen small guys, short guys, lifting the double of their weight, you know? For example, this guy was like 50 kilos and he was like lifting 100 kilos, you know? And yes, he was trained and everything, but he wasn't big, you know? He was just strong, you know? Some people are stronger than others. This is also something that we must consider when we talk, we think, when we examine a real fight situation. So, the question is, are martial arts pointless? Well, of course not. Because if you train hard every day, if you're constant, if you're persistent, if you're improving yourself, if you're working on your weak points, if you're strengthening yourself, if you improve your technique and learn how to hit hard and how to hit real things, hit real things, just don't hit something in the air like other styles do. Well, learn where to hit and how to hit because there are some vital points and these vital points are the same for each and every one of us you know there's no difference between me and Mike Tyson if I hit Mike Tyson very hard on his chin it will fall down you know it will be KO it will be knocked out it will be done and anybody can be done so you learn how to hit but especially where to hit you know that's important and that can make a difference yeah let's consider muscles for example muscles you know it's great to have muscles to be ripped to be big it can grant you protection if somebody is hitting you if somebody is trying to punch you or kick you yes i agree with that but at the same time you must consider that being too ripped being too big may and will reduce your mobility and therefore it will reduce your speed and your you know effectiveness in hitting your opponent on time because also speed can and will make a difference in a real fight situation. Well, in a real street fight, there are no rules. You make the rules. There's no referee, there's nothing, you know. There's, you must hit your opponent. The environment can have a strong impact on the final result of the fight, you know. Because, for example, you might slip on something, fall down on the floor, and your opponent will take advantage upon you and that's the end of the fight. Also clear the fact that you might be fighting against more than one opponent at a time, at the same time. Your opponent may have a weapon, may have a knife, may even grab a bottle from the ground and break it and come against you with that bottle. You never know what can happen, so always be ready. And most importantly, your opponent will never fight the way you're used to fighting. To make it clear, to make a real example of what I'm talking about, for example, let us examine for a moment the way Sicilian people fight. It's a different way. It's not like karateka, it's not like karate, for example. It's not like kung fu, it's not like this, this kind of punches. It's not like with kicks, you know. When I saw two Sicilians fighting, I hardly saw kicks, you know. Sometimes I saw kicks, and of course we're talking about lower kicks, no high kicks. But what I saw is a movement that resembles the movement of the Sicilian staff. I made a video about this. Please check this video. It's a very interesting video about the Sicilian culture and the Sicilian fighting staff. Link in the description below. That's the way, you know, Sicilian people do. Like they, they can hit you with open hands, so with slaps on the face, you know. And or you can do the same thing with with punches. So you'll punch this way. And you must imagine this to be very very fast. It's very unpredictable. So you can do it this way. So from down to up, or you can go from up. So this way, you know. And believe me, it is very unpredictable. It may sound like stupid, but it's not. I've done some sparing with my brother and, you know, I was able to hit him many, many times. Of course, I didn't hit him like in full force, but I was hitting him, you know. It's very effective. Also must consider that in every culture, people fight in a different way. I believe in the United States, people tend to punch more than in using slaps. But here, like, we use more slaps than punches for sure. And other cultures tend to fight the way they fight. Well, in order to win a fight, if you're a martial artist, you must be somebody who has trained for several years, somebody who knows how to execute the proper technique, 
properly and how to hit your opponent, somebody who's used to hitting real things and somebody who has some experience. Well, there's no guarantee because your opponent may be naturally stronger than you are. My, my suggestion to you guys and to myself is to always carry some pepper spray and you know, if you can have some like a baseball bat or some kind of weapon always with you. And my giving suggestion is always carry something. For example, like even a torch can make a difference in a flashlight. You can flashlight your opponent in his face and you will confuse him for a few seconds. That will give an advantage to either escape or to hit him in some way. Or I tend to protect myself, therefore I have weapons and I try to be as prepared as I can. Even when you walk around, for example, when I walk around, I tend to look around. I tend to look behind because, you know, surprise is a great advantage in a real fight situation. You know? If somebody's trying to rob you, if somebody's trying to, you know, steal your money away from you, it's not going to give you a phone call and tell you, hey, I'm going to steal some money away from you today. You must be always ready and prepared to face any situation. But also be ready for unpredictable movements. Be ready for unpredictable people, you know, and let's hope this never happens to us. But if you can run, run away, you know, if you can avoid a fight, please do it. However, my personal opinion on this is if you really find yourself into troubles, if your wife or your daughter or your children are into troubles, please defend them, you know, just fight. Well, thank you so much for watching. It was a great video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for your support and to my patrons for their amazing support. I hope to get more support from you guys. I love you so much. Till the next video. And remember, if you feel sad, you better call Sal. Bye-bye.